Hi everyone. Today is December 13th and today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about Carb December. Um, this has been going on for a while. I've been traveling and so I haven't really had a chance to come back and talk to you about carving. But I know many of you are unfamiliar with this and um, this is an opportunity to, you know, kind of take a dive and do something with this. There are many products out on the market and it can be quite confusing. So I'm going to kind of walk through some of this and explain about some of these products. There are many types of rubber that you can use for your carving. The first thing that you need to think about is a tool and there are a number of different tools. Um, this particular carving tool, I don't even know if it's on the market anymore, is from Walnut, ha Walnut Hollow. You can see it's got the logo here. I did find a similar tool on the internet from, um, who is this, Doris has uh, carving tools like this and they are wood carvers and I like this one in particular because I can get a nice sharp edge. Um, there's a gouge here, that's what they're talking about when you have these little v-shapes. Um, but this this particular set runs about eight dollars on Amazon and I'll, I'll put some links in for you if you're interested in any of these types of tools. Also this type of tool, um, this is a handle and I keep several blades, different size blades in my handles. This one um, just has a hollowed out piece here, but, and, and don't judge me, yes, I have a lot of tools, but I've been collecting these for a lot of years, and um, a lot of times you'll find these things in the discount aisle, and that's when I pick them up, because um, they may be clearancing something, but you can see I have different sizes of the gouge tips in these so that I don't have to keep changing my tip out as I work. So that's something that you can do. It, you can always change it out. These are little screw pieces um, that fit in here and this just unscrews and this piece pops right out and it fits down into the top here. So just like this slides in and then you can tighten it back down and you can get any number yeah yes and you can tighten it back down <laughs> helps if you screw it the right direction okay so you can get any number of different pieces to go into your handle I have a box of extra ones here. I, these are just from the dollar store and they have the snap lid so you're not going to cut yourself on the extra pieces. And these are extra blades that um, I keep on hand. And then in the handle here is also a nice carrying place. Um, let me see what I have to get this open with. Um, on this type, it has an end that'll pop off, and you can see that you can carry extra blades inside of this particular tool, so they're easy to, to trade out. Um, you don't have that option in this type, because there's, there's just this empty hole in here, but it works just as well, and I think, I don't know, I think I might have picked this up for three bucks or something. They were cheap. Um, this is going to run you a bit more. I think I bought this in a set with the blades and everything. And I want to say they're about 10 bucks. Anyway, there are also these Asian carving tools. Um, I think I got a set of these from a dollar store. It might have been, I might have spent, I don't know, three or four dollars on this set. But um, they work, you know, you got a, you got a V gouge, you got some straight line cuts and this other gouge. Um, I like, I like this set for some purposes. 
However, I do think that you need this little fine blade. This V gouge is like a number one, and it's it's really small. And when you're working on some of these fine cuts, you're going to need something like that. I also keep a couple of X-Acto knives handy um, for straight cuts. And I also keep a um, utility knife because uh, this is going to cut through your pieces. And then some uh, nice sharp scissors. I like these uh, Tim Holtz ones. Um, they work real well with the rubber. And I also like to use a metal ruler. This happens to be one from my fuse, but it has a couple of different straight edges that help me when I'm trying to cut straight edges. Okay, so let's talk about rubber. This is more, this gray is more like the standard lino uh, cutting rubber. And you'll find that even on these brayers, there's different types of rubber. This is a harder rubber, which is more like this, than this soft rubber, which is more like this pink stuff. Um, and you can actually carve designs into your brayers if you want a roller design. So that's one thing that you can do. Um, these brayer style fit into a handle like this so that you can change them out. So you can have multiple cut brayers with different designs if you should want to. You also could do that with these ones from Ranger because they will pop out. Um, on these you just have to pull the end off and then this will pop right out of your tool. And you can, you can cut this rubber down, too, if you want to. Okay, that's brayers. Let's take a look at the different types of rubber that we're going to carve with. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages to each of these. Um, and you can see I've used any number of these for different projects. Let me start with some of the softer products. This particular product, I think I bought at Dick Blick, and it comes in a small block like this. One of the things I like about it is the thickness because you've got something to actually grab onto and stamp with. But as you can see, it's very crumbly material. So it, it is going to fall apart when you're trying to do real fine intricate cuts. Um, but the thing that I found with this is that I can take my cookie cutter dies, cookie cutters, um, and I can cut this material using a cutter like this. So if I want just a nice little piece, let's see which side is the cut side. You have to be careful that you're not cutting yourself. One of these sides is sharper than the other. And then I recommend that you use something else to push that in with. Um, just because you don't want it to gouge your hand. So I just use something to push that into the rubber. And I can peel off the outside edge. like so. And now I have this particular shape. So I have a star, I have an oval, this is a leaf shape. Let's see if I can get this out of here without cutting myself. And I could decide that I want to create some veining in here. So I could take a marker and one of my cutting tools.
and I could very easily carve this out. And the thing that you want to remember is you don't want to push down too heavily because it will it will gouge. And the thing about this particular rubber is that it is crumbly. So you may end up with some crumbly pieces when you go to stamp that you're going to have to clean off of the rubber. Okay, so then I just get let's see if I can clean that off a bit. Then I just get a ink and ink that so that I can test it and see if there's anything else I need to be cutting. And I'm going to stamp that on my paper. And you can see I've created this nice leaf image. Let me stamp these two. This is a star that I cut in the same fashion with a cookie cutter. Okay. So that's a real easy way to create some images. This particular uh, material I like for that reason. And this white material is similar to that but not quite as crumbly. You can see that I've carved, this is called Speedy Carve, and it comes, comes in blocks. And you can, you can actually carve on both sides here. But um, one of the things I found with this particular material is that it is also easy to cut. And if you have like a straight edge, cut that you want to do. Let's see. What do I do with my straight edge? <clears throat> I have my polymer clay cutter. And you can cut you can cut this with your blade. You can cut a straight cut just by coming straight down. Or if I want to do a curved cut, I can come in like this and use my blade and do a curve cut on here and get a nice cut. And then you can also use these are little uh, clay cutters. This is kind of a leaf shape, a star shape. Here's a circle shape and I can come back to my image or my stamp here and I can just cut into this with my little circle punch cutter and I don't have to go all the way through and then I can use a, a gouge and just pop that out like so. And then when I do that, I get a pretty nice circle. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Ink this up. Stamp that out. So you can see the detail that you can get and the nice cut that you can get using those tools. Um, it also carves pretty well. Here's a circle 
that I cut out. And if I wanted to create some pieces within a piece, you know, suppose I wanted to, let's see, I wonder how many I can get out of here. If I do, let's try five. If I do Let me find the center of this. This is a about a two and a half inch circle, and this piece is almost one inch. So I want to come in maybe a quarter inch from the edge, like so, and do this particular cut. Use this to push it with. And you got to be careful around that edge because that could crack very easily. See, there it went. And that's one of the, the hazards of working with this material. So these are stamps that I carved with this same uh, type of rubber. And you can carve it. I just would do a bolder design. These are designs that I did um, using these particular products. So you can see that it does cut quite well. And you just need to be a little more cautious with it so that you're not breaking uh, your piece. But um, I like seeing some of these carved things in here. It reminds me of wood carving. So I leave some of that. Um, if you don't like that and you want a cleaner cut, then you might want to use um, a little deeper cut or a different product. And then this blue speedy carve is very much like this also it is also crumbly as you can see just by looking at the surface of this um, it has this I don't know if you guys can see down in the pits it has this crumbly looking surface after I carve it and that's what I did the background here with I also did um, this particular carve and how you achieve this is by cutting out a snowflake what I do is I take a piece of paper the size that I want and I'm just going to fold fold my paper go ahead and fold it up like you were going to cut a kid's uh, paper doll or what do they call, used to call those chain dolls or something you're just going to cut it like this you're going to fold it up like this and you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut your design in here and create your piece didn't cut that very well. 
<laughs> don't know which way that was supposed to go. Oh, well. Cut it off. Okay, so when you unfold your piece then, you have your pattern. And what I do is just take a corner of my sticky note is sticking. And if you want some more design down in the bottom, you can come up through there. And create another layer of complexity. cutting in there. And then I take my piece, here's a little piece of speedy carve, not really big enough. Okay, so I take a piece of the speedy carve, and this is just scrap material left over from other things. I'm just going to take my corner, cut out, and I'm going to pick a corner, and then I'm going to place this into the corner, like so, and then I'll take a marker. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take a marker and mark out the area I'm going to cut around. Here and inside here. Just like so. Okay, and then when you're done, like this one, you can see where I had taken this, placed it on here, and then I carved around, and then I have this particular stamp. And so what you do with this is you take your ink. corner and you're going to stamp that image and that's one piece and then you're going to work around your image matching it up like so until you have your completed piece like this. So that's another idea for doing your carved December stamps. I'm not lining that up, but you get you get the drift. Okay? So that's that one. This one, where I cut this out, I could actually take these little pieces and I could carve into these and create another design and then I could stamp these in here. So let's do... Uh, where's my little fine one? Here we go. Let's do some squiggles. Okay, 
So now I have a design in there. Get a con contrasting. That's a red. Let's get a. Hmm, let's get a yellow to do the interior of that with. So then I can just ink this and stamp the contrast. In here and you can see that you can just keep playing you know you can take the next size down and you can do the other piece and it just continues you just continue to play okay so then I have this pink what do they call this? This is called Speedy Car from Speedball. And you can see that this stuff is much more flexible without breaking. I can pull on it. I can twist it. It's not going to break. So I can do more intricate cuts with this. And I can take, suppose I have an image. Let's see, what do I have here? Um, yeah, <laughs> I thought I had something out here. Okay, let me just use this for an example. Suppose I have an image like this, and I want to make a tree on here. I can just take some graphite and put it on the back or I can um, draw Let's see I can take take a little graphite off of my pencil put it on the back of this over on here and I can draw on top of this to figure out where I want to carve and for this particular image I want the tree to stand out so when you're carving what you're leaving behind is what you're going to see and what you're carving away is the empty space so I'm just coming down I'm gonna make a little trunk here and you can see I just barely have an image on here I can come back with my pencil enhance that image for what I want to leave on rubber you guys are getting the idea here just make a shaggy shaggy old pine tree there's the trunk and then you can take your tool and you always want to carve away from yourself so you're not cutting yourself and I can just go to the outside of my lines here and clean all of this out and that will create my rubber stamp just by cleaning this away and then this will be the raised surface so that would be like this where I've cleaned all of this away and this is my raised surface for stamping if you're going to do words, just remember that they have to be backwards because this is a mirror image. So if you're going to stamp a word, it needs to be the other direction. You can see here's the solid piece. Here's the carved out piece so you can see the background through here. And then this piece 
is a rubber stamp that I got from the dollar store in a set. And so I just carved it out and um, now I can ink this up. And I have created yet another rubber stamp. just from an eraser from the dollar store. And then this particular material is going to give you a much finer cut than any of the previous materials that we looked at. Um, you can get it in large sheets for a reasonable price. This one uh, is ready cut plate. It's a nine by. This has been cut down. This started out as a nine by twelve uh, ready cut plate from Dick Blick. The item number was four zero four two two zero zero nine one two. And um, yeah, this cuts entirely differently because this is more like what you think of for rubber, like your regular rubber, red rubber stamps, this is very flexible. So I'm going to have a harder time cutting through this. It's not that you can't, but you know, if you're, if you're lining this up to cut it into a block, like if I wanted a one inch block or one and a half inch, let's see, let's do a one and a half by one and a half. This edge is fairly straight, but this other one isn't. I'm just going to line it up on my mat here, and then I would use a utility knife to do my cutting. And I would take several passes through here. to get my straight edge. I'm cutting on glass so I get a nice, see that nice crisp line that I'm getting with that? So that was one and a half. Let's do one and a half this direction. I don't know if that edge is even either. You have to cut that down. But you can see you can get a much more precise cut on here. And you'll take much more time and be much more careful than I am with this. Just remember you're working with sharp things, so you want to keep your fingers away. So I've got that and that. That still does not look square, so let's line this edge up. So now I have a block, and I could, I could, you know, put a design on here, I can freehand it. I think I'm just going to, I'm going to start by just doing a border.
so I hope you enjoyed this today. Um, you can see I was able to create quite a bit in a short period of time. And I hope you try this out for yourselves. Um, you know, get a couple of different products and experiment. It doesn't cost that much and it's worth a try to see what you like. Um, you may prefer one product over another and it's all a personal preference thing. I always say that, you know, because we don't all do things the same way. So enjoy your holidays. Uh, I hope to see you again before the new year and have a wonderful time with your family and friends. Hug a loved one and be kind to yourselves. Be sure and click the bell below if you want notification about anything I am producing here in the future and I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.